Back to Kilmallock here for this Irish Wire product sponsored Limerick Senior Football Championship game between Drumcall Herb Roth and Bally Landers. Bally Landers lead nine points to one five Matt at the break, is it? We've no yeah. scoreboard in operation here in Kilmallock today. Yeah, it's nine points to one five. Just awaiting Bally Landers uh, who are coming back onto the field now. In the first half, Bally Landers will be a bit disappointed to be only one point going up at the break with the advantage of a strong breeze. Matt, it's up to Drum Broadford now to make use of the breeze. Yeah, I, I, I expect that, they, that they, they will go on the offensive from the start and, and press forward. I can confirm that um, Drum Broadford are going as they finished the first half. They, they have no, no changes. Um, yeah, there seems to be one change in the Bally Landers. Jason Lee is in. We're just waiting to find out who's gone off well, for Bally Landers. He's gone in the right corner there. Oh. Right corner back, Mark and Derry McCarthy, to the start of this half. And he's on for Owen Martin. So that's the one, one change from what we can see early on before the ball is thrown in. One referee to another on shot at the moment. Mike Sexton, an inter-county referee. Johnny Murphy chatting. Johnny involved with the, ba with the Bally Landers set up. Ready to go here, Matt. What do you reckon for the second half? Well, I suppose we always say in the second half, first 10 minutes are crucial. They probably will be crucial. It, um, uh, there seems to be a p positional switch, which is significant for Drum Broadford already, in that um, Garrett Noonan seems to be taking up the position at centre half back. Um, now, Bally Landers are on the offence. On the offensive. And it's Ola Mahoney with the chance. It's a great run from Mahoney, but sadly for Bally Landers' point of view, his shot was poor and a tail to the left. That's four wides on the trot, encompassing the end of the first half and the start of the second half now. Yeah, uh, uh, whilst um, from Bradford didn't have the same number of chances, they were far more economical with the ones they have. They had, uh, they had, they had only one, um, one um, wide in, in, in the first half. And early in the second half, we seem to they seem to be getting Kieran Kelly on the ball, which. It seems to have worked out as Kelly creates the chance for Jimmy Barry Murphy and Murphy, who's been by far and away the most successful shot taker and scorer of this game, pops over another one. Bally Landers back into a two-point lead. Yeah, and uh, that that's an important score for Bally Landers, but it was important in in the two minutes that we have played that we probably have seen more of Kieran Kelly in those two minutes than we saw in the entire first half. And he's somebody if they get into the game, he could certainly hurt. Uh, the drum Broadford because he he has lightning pace, very well able to take a, very well able to take a score and he certainly could put could put drum Broadford on the hind foot if were there to use him. Once again, it, that that point came from another poor drum Broadford uh, kick goal kick. And it's drum Broadford on the attack now. Michal Brosnan gives it inside. And it's Gerard O'Gorman on the run. Gerard O'Gorman has an effort from far off. Smacks off the post. First to react, though, is Shane Fox for Belly Landers. He clears the danger and comes away with the ball and leaves it off to Ono Mahoney. Ono Mahoney, closely attended by Killian Fahey, pops it back to Fox. Fox plays it back inside to the new man in Jason Lee. Lee with 30 yards of room. He advances, heading towards his 45 now and leaves the ball off. To Tom O'Dwyer, O'Dwyer into O'Connell. Mark O'Connell advancing down the field, gives it to Brother Brian on the left wing. Inside to Owen Walsh. Walsh comes back outside to Fruin, one of Belly Landers' most frequent shooters. Fruin looking to look for a shooting space, even into the breeze from 45 metres. Off the great ball inside. And it's Brian O'Connell. He beats his man O'Connell to shoot, O'Connell to score, and Belly Landers into a three point lead. Yeah, that, 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 that was an excellent um, pick out by, by Danny Froon, but the, a worrying aspect about it from a Bally Landers point of view was that Danny Froon was left for the best part of 30 seconds there. He was trying to hold on to the ball without fouling it, without an option, until Brian O'Connell made the run and fair play to Danny Froon. Froon he picked out the run straight away in, 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 and, and Brian O'Connell executed. It, it, it was an excellent excellently executed point and we have another one here from Ona Mahoney. And Ona Mahoney after another poor kick out from from James Noon and the drum brought for a goal. It's something that, that is driving the sideline of the drum brought for the management team. Crackers at the moment is the only way I could describe it but Valley Landers won't care. They've taken advantage of it all game and Ona Mahoney stretches their lead to four to the beginning of the second half. 
Yeah, and, uh, and uh, I, spo I suppose um, it, it, it was the, the uh, perfect response that Ballylanders would have looked for um, at half time. Um, certainly to put Drummer on, on the hind foot. And of course, the important thing is that they're moving forward in the second half, moving forward faster and with more purpose. And more, even more importantly, still, they're executing the chances. It's Killian Fahey with a great run there, down the field, 30 metre run, went for the shot, brilliantly blocked by Brian O'Connell, I'm sorry, Mark O'Connell, and it's Bally Landers advancing away with the ball again with Mark O'Connell, hand pass goes astray, but they should still keep possession, and it's new man in, Jason Lee, for Bally Landers, he holds possession of the ball, Jason Lee, onto Brian O'Connell, popped up with a lovely score, change hands, and Mike Sexton gives the free. Brian O'Connell looks perplexed as to the rewarding of it. And Mike Sexton explains to him, and Derry McCarthy looks to be taking this free. Lack of movement in the drum, for drum brought for forward line at the moment, Matt. No, no, we're looking for a response from drum. Like we were looking for a response from Valley Landers twice in the first half when when they went to goal down after a minute, and then when after getting three points when they went a couple of points behind again, and 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 they got the response. Maybe not the entire response that they that they would have desired, but now we're looking to drum, drum Bradford uh, for um for a response, and tis they have to come out and chase the game now. Indeed, and it's a free for drum Bradford. Out on the left-hand side, from Bradford looked under a bit of pressure there to hold on to possession, but they managed it, and Derry McCarthy will have the chance to reduce Bally Landers' lead to three. It's an awkward angle, but if, usually if Derry strikes him right, to go over the bar. From Bradford badly in need of a score to get them back into this game. It certainly isn't a gimme, John. This is a difficult enough kick. Um, and he's well capable of scoring. He takes it short. Can Mihal O'Sullivan back inside to Derry McCarthy. Should score from here. And Derry McCarthy makes no mistake. And Bally Landers' lead is back to three. Well worth score, Matt. Yeah, well worth score. And uh, it, it, Bally Landers, ju just for a moment there, probably switched off and did, did, didn't pick up the run of Mike O'Sullivan. And, um, but it was a well-executed score. Substitution now on the drum colour abroad for team. In comes Peter Mulcahy and off is Dee O'Leary. D had been moved forward into the forward line. And it's a poor kick out from Declan O'Connor. He aimed for the run of Danny Froon. It was just a few metres off his target. And a sideline cut for Drum Broadford to be taken by Patrick Stack. Ball, Brosnan tries to take possession, but Belly Landers have it. And that's going to be a Belly Landers line ball. Mm. Yeah, Brosnan unable to. Stevie Fox is going to take this for Bally Landers. Easy ball inside. Moss Kelly and away they come again with Brian O'Connell. Brian gives it long enough into Owen Walsh. Walsh does well to gain possession, leaves off back to Brian O'Connell. Bally Landers now looking for space inside the full forward. It's into Jimmy Barry Murphy, faced up by Jack Ryan, but Jack Ryan is unable to take dispossess Jimmy Barry Murphy. Murphy on the run. Leaves the ball back off to Brian O'Connell, who's spent most of his day in the attacking third of the field, making runs. It's Danny Fruin now coming in for right. Ball inside, it's a good ball. Chance, Ona Mahoney has Ona Mahoney, twists and turns and puts Bally Landers back into a four point lead. Lovely score. Yeah, certainly Bally Landers, uh, you, you would have to say, in the eight or nine odd minutes of the second half, are playing playing much better, much more purposeful and, and much more much more direct. Yes, they're moving it through a certain amount of hands, but they're moving it that bit faster. You're right, Brian O'Connell is making a lot of runs there into the def into the attack and he, he, he's giving options and um, certainly uh, Bellylanders have upped their performance. The trick for Bellylanders at this point is to maintain it. And they win possession from another drum broad for kick out. It's been a feature of their game throughout all of the first half and indeed the early stage of the second half. It's Massador. He's going to have a go outside of his right foot. Looks to be close. Is it over the bar? It's not. It's wide. And I think, Matt, that's their sixth wide of the game. It's actually their eight, eight wide. Eight. Six wides in the first half and now have, have two wides. Uh, taking off, Peter Mulcahy, uh, Di O'Leary. Um, he, he's one of Drum's most experienced defenders. He, he has been through through the great years and um, 
Peter Mulcahy is, is, is a player that's probably less known at this level. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if, if, if it will have an impact on Drum Bradford. And Drum Bradford on the attack. They went short with that kick out and have advanced it down inside the Valley Landers half. Dennis Donegan, he manages to offload to Keith Liss inside to Kevin Noonan where it's crowded with Valley Landers defenders in midfield. He has to check back out into My Michael O'Sullivan inside to Gerald Gorman. There's a bit of room for Patrick Sack. Stack takes on, is well met by his shoulder. But Stack has a, an, has a shot, hits the inside of the post and over the bar, and there's three between them again, Matt. Yeah, an important uh, score for, for Drum Broadford in that it brings it back to three, it brings them back w w within touching distance. A bit alarming for Valley Landers. Patrick Stack got into acres of space, and uh, they will just have to close down the space, and that's the second time that, that, uh, that the defence has more or less switched off for the Derry McCarthy free prior to this and now for the Patrick Stack point. Kick out to Valley Landers. Kick out was won by Danny Froon. Well placed kick from Declan O'Connor, but it's Drum Bradford back in possession now and they're moving in the middle of the park. Derry McCarthy on the ball. Been faced by Jason Lee. Hand pass inside to Dennis Donegan. Donegan out the wing to Fahey. Killian Fahey now looking at his options inside. There isn't too many, so he offloads again to Donegan. Donegan powers through. Stephen Walsh comes in with the challenge to the last. Touch of the ball, came off down again. Good defending from Stephen Walsh. Goal yeah. kick out for Valley Landers. Excellent defending. And I, I, th I think from Broadford thought that they were entitled to a 45 there, but the referee again was right on the, on, on the spot, as, as was, his, was his umpire. Um, no doubt at all about it. I think it's the right call. Short kick out from Declan O'Connor. And Valley Landers come away at Moss Kelly into Brian O'Connell. Brian O'Connell's. Looks like the fittest man to feel. He's up and down all the way through the game so far. He gives it inside to Moss Kelly. Moss inside to Stevie Fox. Quite enough first half from Stevie Fox. He's been on the ball more. And another man who's been on the ball more in the second half is Kieran Kelly. Kelly taking on Lacey and beats him with ease. Huge pace here from Kieran Kelly. Decides against taking the shot and leaves it back outside to Stevie Fox. Fox to Jimmy Barry Murphy. Murphy is hit. No free awarded. Played away back inside. There's a ball inside for Ron O'Mahony. O'Mahony's unable to take it, and out it comes. Ross Egan and Kevin Noonan all the way back in his inside his 14-meter line. Gives it out to Garrett Noonan. Noonan back inside to, to Kevin Noonan. Noonan, captain of the Drum Broadford team. Their leading scorer of the championship so far. But has been kept relatively quiet by the Ballylanders defence there. And that's why you see him back inside his own half. Killian Fahey in the middle of the park now. Left foot of ball from Fahey, but that's that's a stray. Poor pass from Fahey, he'd expect better of himself from that, and it's going to be a belly lander sideline ball. Yeah, we, we got a glimpse again of the type of danger that that that, that um, um, Kieran Kelly is, is, is capable of, of, of creating. Like the, the guy has pace to burn, and if belly landers could only get him on the ball, but you would have to say in that particular incident incident that it was very very good defending by Keith Lacey from Bradford who, who shadowed him and kept him out near the line and reduced his options. Danny Fruin now inside to Fox. Fox definitely more visible in the second half so far. Fox assessing his options into Jimmy Barry Murphy who appears to be double marked by Jack Ryan and whoever else is near him but Ryan doing his best. He manages to hold off Jimmy Barry Murphy there and Murphy is forced to bring the ball back inside to Moss O'Dwyer. Moss looks around and there's eight, there's about 20 yards of room and Moss runs into it. Still going Tom O'Dwyer. Ball inside to Ono Mahoney. O'Mahoney with another shooting chance. And it's wide, it looked to be going over but the wind brought it, brought it to the left hand post. And let off for Drum Broadford, we have another sub on now coming on for Drum Broadford. It's number 22, Damien Burke is coming in, just waiting to see who's going off. Seems to be Dennis Donegan that's coming towards us. Dennis Donegan or M Michael O'Sullivan. Well, it's actually a double substitution for Drum Broad for Damien Burke. I didn't quite catch Matt to you the second oh. substitution. Damien Burke is one of them. It's Dennis Donegan and Michael O'Sullivan gone off. I'm still waiting to see. We'll, we'll keep up a play. Great take from Killian Fahey. A rare thing from a Drum Broadford kick out so far this evening Fahey marks the ball and takes it and launches it long it's not the best of balls and Stephen Walsh gets a punch to it and Valley Landers come away with the ball once more 
Moss Kelly leaves it off to Brian O'Connell and it's Stevie Fox back inside. Stephen Walsh now coming, looking ahead to see what's ahead of him. It's a low hand pass, it's a poor one and Ross Egan intercepts for Drum Broadford. He leaves it off. And Shawnee Buckley is the man on for Drum Broadford, but it looks like Shawnee Buckley, we were told before the game, was an injury doubt and an injury doubt for the rest of the season, but it's Shawnee Kelly on now, and that'll be a huge boost to Drum Broadford, Matt. Yeah, it's a huge boost um, with, with, with in, in entering into the, into the last quarter to have somebody of the calibre of Shawnee Buckley to bring on it. It's a huge, huge boost. And uh, talking of boost, it looks as if Bally Landers may be about to counteract it because it appears to me that Kieran O'Callaghan may be about to get ready. Kieran O'Callaghan has been Bally Landers' leading scorer, mainly from freeze this season in the Limerick Senior Football Championship. Meanwhile, Kevin Noonan has a chance here for Drum Broadford. A free from about 35 to 40 metres. Noonan lining it up now with his left foot. Starts it off in the middle, but tails to the right and wide. And it was a difficult chance, Matt, but one he may have expected to get. Yeah, one, in the, yeah, and I, I, I suppose he, in the context of the game, it, it, it's probably one that got away for 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 for, um, for Trump Bradford, and um, they, they certainly will be will be disappointed. It's it's 13 points to one seven. It's 13 scores to eight, and if you factor out the um, the goal in the first minute, since that it's been 13 points to seven. And I suppose it, 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 it reflects certainly the, the excellent third quarter that Bally Landers had. Another chance for Drum Bradford from Patrick Stack. He scored his last one from an acute angle, but this time he was unable to hit the target. And another scoreable chance gone a begging for the West Limerick side. Yeah, but you, you would have to say um, uh, Patrick Stack, he, he probably did everything right there, but um, he was pressurised into shooting. And... and um, Bally Landers are exerting more pressure back there um, because certainly um, they, from Bradford in the first half got scores from loose situations but the, the defence has been tighter like Stephen Walsh has thundered into the game since midway through the first half and he, he, he's outstanding back there Shane, Shane Walsh or uh, Shane Fox Morris Kelly like they're, they're defending back there like Tigers um, Jason Lee has come on and, uh, and uh, has done a good job since he has since he has come on like Bally Landers have upped the performance all over the field and uh, it, it's it's a question of, of sustaining it. This game is is far from over. It's very, very much in the melting pot. Brian O'Connell, who's been one of the stars for Bally Landers, won that free and it's been worked left. And Stephen Walsh now on the attack. Walsh lined up by Shawnee Buckley. And it's Buckley, with brilliant from Buckley, showing all his experience there. The get back from his centre forward position, dispossess a dangerous Bally Landers attack. And it's from Rodford now trying to work the ball out of their own half. Hand passing it down the left hand side. It's Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan had the ball, but he's last possession. It's a sideline ball. It's Brian O'Connell yet again for Bally Landers. Winning. Brian O'Connell's gone down. Mike Sexton's having none of it. Brian O'Connell, hands outstretched. <laughs> like, like uh, sniper Matt, you would say, but maybe not on this occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a, s certainly something happened here. All in from Jimmy Barry Murphy, Tony O'Mahony, O'Mahony, chance of a goal, he offs her a point and Bally Landers lead by four again. Superb ball in from Jimmy Barry Murphy, on O'Mahony positioned at full forward for the second half. He's been a dangerous proposition all half, every time the ball goes in, he looks like a score coming from it. Yeah, and um, that, that, that is reflected in that he has kicked three points in the second half and kicked four points in total, I suppose. Apart from Jimmy Barry Murphy, who has been mainly from freeze, he, he's Bally Landers' most potent, potent forward. But he is an ex-Limerick minor player and was a very good county minor footballer. So, um, I, I, I suppose, um, and still a very young player. I think he's still under 21, perhaps, or, or just over it. So, like... You know, it's, it's it's something that you would expect from a player of that calibre, but certainly he, he's been a key man in the second half. From Bradford back on the attack with Shawnee Buckley after good work from Jura Gorman. Buckley runs into a double challenge but manages to hold on to possession. Finds Stack. Stack inside pass to Michal Brosnan. Brosnan looks for Kevin Noonan. Noonan pot shot from the edge of the semicircle and it's gone straight over the bar. Fine score from Kevin Noonan. I believe it's the first from play. Yeah, it's his first from play, but it's 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 um, 
it, it, it's a very very important score um, in, in that it keeps them in touch but because um, at, at four points down were Belly Landers to get the next score um, the gap would begin to yawn a bit and um, certainly that keeps it uh, it keeps it in touch and it certainly keeps the, the, the result very very much in the melting pot we're in for a nail biting last 10 minutes John Indeed we are in Patrick Stackwin's possession from the Bell Landers game Shawnee Buckley outside rifle an absolutely glorious pass but Brian O'Connell is there and Jason Lee as well and they come out with the ball to Bally Landers Stephen Walsh has possession. Damien Burke tries to dispossess him, but no danger of that happening with Stephen Walsh storming into it, as Matt explained a few minutes ago, since the middle of the first half. It's Bally Landers' patience. It's them with the three-point lead at the moment. They're in no rush to move the ball upfield. It's Ono Mahoney, last seen at full forward a couple of minutes ago, but he's back in his own half, helping out his defence as they carry the ball. It's Brian O'Connell to Kelly. O'Connell is lost out and a chance for John Bradford. Five, Drum Bradford don't have enough, but Shawnee Buckley is one man who's on the attack now. Buckley is fouled, free given in, and a scoreable chance to reduce the gap to two points, Matt. Yeah, you, you, you would have to fancy Kevin Noonan or Derry McCarthy, more likely Kevin Noonan, to take this one um, and reduce the gap to two points. But Shawnee Buckley certainly has made an impact in the game and in typical Shawnee Buckley fashion he is covering all areas of the pitch he, he's, he's been back defending a while ago and, and, and Rob Stephen Walsh going through you will recall and, and um, he, here he's creating a free up now at the other end he's covering a lot of ground of course um, he's probably sent in as an impact sub and he's, he is just that Indeed he is, as Kevin Noonan points that one for Drum Broadford. Another free from the left boot of Kevin Noonan. The Drum Broadford captain reduces Ballylander's lead to two points. Uh, as I said, Ballylander's leading by two as Declan O'Connor kicks long. It's long, broken down by Gerda Garman, but Tom O'Dwyer wins it, the breaking ball for Ballylander's ball inside. It's Stevie Fox. There's a great ball. Brian O'Connell maraudering up forward. A goal chance here for Ballons. A wonderful save. Brilliant save from James Noonan. In the balance and the shot. The rebound is taken up. And it's Kieran Kelly who taps it over the bar, I think. Was it Matt? Oh, Danny Froon. It's Danny Froon who's got an it. An excellent point. That that was a cheeky point, but <laughs> it was an excellent passage of play. I, I, I'm sure that did Danny just spot that the goalkeeper was slightly disadvantaged off his line and that he went to chip him in, but he, he chipped, it, uh, chipped it over the bar with great accuracy because it, 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 the angle was so, so tight. It was indeed. It was an effort. And there's no doubt Danny Froon, given his level of quality, tried for a goal there, but was unlucky. Inches over the bar that one went following a great save from James Noonan, Drum Bradford keeper from Brian O'Connell, who again, we've said it already today, Matt, he's been absolutely everywhere. As Shawnee Buckley puts one inside, looking for Kevin Noonan, Noonan breaks it, Garrett Noonan comes onto it. Noonan heading towards goal now, Garrett Noonan, will he have to fist it over the bar? Yeah. He's hit it wide, he's punched it wide, a huge chance for a score, and missed by Garrett Noonan. Yeah, you would have to say a good tight defending by Ballylanders didn't didn't give much of an option at, at that point. Um, it would look as if Ballylanders are, are going possibly going to make a substitution. Um, there's deliberations going on here in the line. Certainly, they, they they have players down there that can make a difference. There's, for instance, Kieran O'Callaghan, who we thought was warming up well ago. James Kirby is a hugely experienced player that has played in the county final in, in 2014. And of course, there, there's there's David McCarthy, the former Limerick under 21 All Ireland winning goalkeeper, um, who, who who's a very very accomplished footballer. So, like, they have those options, but they they are making a change, and it looks as if Kieran. Is 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 Callahan is no relation by the way. He's about to come on. <laughs> no relation indeed, as Matt <laughs> explains the situation with Belly Landers. Away they come with it. And Moss Kelly coming down the left wing. Moss has had a lot of ball in the second half, coming out of it with cor from cornerback. And now he's advancing up the field after taking Stephen Watch's pass. Kelly, high ball in, favouring the defender at Shaw Sullivan easily takes it. Sean Yellow card in the first half. He's had a better second half any time the ball's gone in this way. It's that way. 
Ross Egan inside to Damien Burke. Burke loses out. And once again, we've said it so many times, as Brian O'Connell doing the dirty work up and down the field. He wins possession. And it's Jimmy Barry Murphy. Murphy, the mercurial Murphy, looks to strike. And again, it's over the ball. A wonderful score from Jimmy Barry Murphy, set up by the tireless Brian O'Connell. And another score for Valley Landers, Matt, and that puts them... That, that that's puts them four four clear again. So um, he, he, they're, they're certainly in a strong position, and you'd have to say it's theirs to lose again. But you you, you have been talking there about Brian O'Connell, like um, that, that was typical Brian O'Connell, terrier-like effort, won a ball, turned over a ball, and 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 set up Jimmy Barry Murphy. But you would have to say that Jimmy Barry Murphy's execution, his coolness, his calmness um, under the pressure in, in, in knocking it over was superb. Substitution, as Matt was saying earlier, Kieran O'Callaghan is now on the field for Belly Landers. He's come on for Liam Martin midfield as Kieran Kelly lines up another shot and Belly Landers stretched their lead to five points. Another excellently worked score. Again, they won the break from the drum rod for a kick out, worked it into a scoring position, and Kelly made no mistake from 25 metres. Kelly's speed and accuracy is, is, is a resource that you know, Belly Landers can or any team could ill afford not to use to the, to the maximum and I think he typified it there he has typified it with his runs in the first half and he's typified it with his run and execution there and Drum Bradford back on attack trying to reduce the lead as Derry McCarthy goes in loses possession and Stevie Fox is back there and he puts it out for a 45 a 45 that will more than likely be taken by maybe not Kevin Noonan maybe Derry McCarthy will come back out himself doesn't look to be either of them coming out and Garrett Noonan looks to be lining it up well capable of putting this one over, but he's taken it short. Shorts and Mihal Brosnan and Garrett Noonan from long range. Skies one, and that looks to be going well wide of the post. And in, it's kept in play by it's kept in play there by Patrick Stack. And Declan O'Connor picks position, picks up possession, excuse me, and Jason Lee comes away with it for Belly Lander, Stevie Fox. Jimmy Barry Murphy typifying this effort from Belly Landers back in his own. In own half, and onto Brian O'Connell, switching from right to left wing now. With possession, under, and Jura Garman. And he's pulled up for, he's pulled up for over-carrying, but Drum Bradford are calling for more action from Brian O'Connell. Yeah. There's still, there's, there's a bit of afters going on here, all right, but... Um, uh, I think it's only handbags, it's the heat of battle. We're, we're, we're into the last defining few moments of it. But again, it was a great run. And Stephen Fox, you will have probably noticed for the last 10 minutes or so, is playing, you, you will see him playing much nearer to his own goal than the opposition goal. And he absolutely great man in this type of situation. He's, um, he's been extremely visible in the last 10 minutes, all right, Matt. Patrick Stack was starting to cause problems down this right hand side, and it seems like Stevie Fox has been earmarked to, pin to pinpoint him from this moment forward. Kevin Noonan inside, Killian Fahey. 45 metres from the Belly Landers goal. He offs for the hand pass, the 1 2 indeed, with Derry McCarthy. And it's Garrett Noonan who's definitely advanced up the field. It's a better shot from Garrett Noonan this time around, and that's straight over the bar. Four points between the teams once again. With two minutes to go, um, it's important that, 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 that for, for Drum Broadford that, that they stay in touch with Belly Landers for, for the next two, three minutes, however long Mike Sexton will decide to add on. It's all about containment. Don't make the others um, hold on to what they have. Terribly, terribly important. And you're seeing now that Drum Broadford, they're going for goals, and I'll tell you why, because the at this stage, the ageless Ray Lynch is on, Matt, and we all know at this stage, Ray Lynch has an amount of experience and is well able to sniff out a goal when needed. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you can just see the wealth of experience that they were in a position to call off the bench in, in, in their hour of need, Shawnee Buckley first, and, 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 and now Ray Lynch. But it's Bally Landers that are on the attack, and they'll want to keep the ball up that side of the field. Indeed it is with Jimmy Barry Murphy inside, and Kieran Kelly with his second point in the space of five minutes. Another wonderful, with ease, Belly Landers worked that ball up the field. Jimmy Barry Murphy, he's been scoring points, he's been setting them up, and this time it's for Kieran Kelly. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, that's Kieran Kelly's second point. And we did make the point earlier, oh, great catch by Mark O'Connell there, and it's Belly Landers where they want to be attacking. Indeed, what a superb catch from Mark O'Connell, a feature of Belly Landers' play, without question, as the way they've attacked Drum Broadford's kick out from the first minute. 
and it's proved fruitful for them throughout this game. Here's a oh no, Manny with the ball and lives it off and it's Jimmy Barry Murphy. Very much a possession game for Belly Landers at the moment. It's Barry Murphy inside to Jason Lee. Lee gives the ball and it's Kieran O'Callaghan who wins it. O'Callaghan onto his right foot and it's over the bar from O'Callaghan and surely mad at this stage. It looks like victory for Belly Landers. Yeah, it, 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 it looks like um, the Belly Landers are on course for their, their first victory of, of the campaign at this stage because we're heading in the time on the watch says time is up and we're into whatever time that, that Mike Sexton decides to add on. In the meantime, from Broadford are introducing Michael Ryan into the game and it would look as if it's Keith Lacey that's coming off from here. I yeah, it's Keith Lacey, all right, coming off, Matt. Is it too late now at this stage to Michael Ryan to make an impact? Time was held, but a six-point lead now for Valley Landers in the last couple of minutes, and they don't look at this stage to be... And we're near leading this lead, leaving this lead goal. From Bradford, badly in need of a goal, or at least one goal, certainly. More than likely, more than that. It's going to be another free as Mike Sexton goes in to sort it out. Nothing really needed to sort out there. It's Drum Broadford will look to launch this. In fact, they go back. Valley Landers looking to make a sub, but Mike Sexton has waved that away. And away come Drum Broadford with the ball. Garrett Noonan coming down the right wing with this ball. The Limerick inter county player inside to Derry McCarthy. McCarthy advancing away into space, beats two on the way. Mike Sexton pulls it back for a free. A ball that will more than likely have to be put in long that Derry McCarthy is going to take. Valley Landers still looking to make that substitution, but not happening yet. As Garrett Noonan has a goal at the outside of his right hand boot. Well wide at target, Matt, not what Drum Broadford needed at this moment. No, certainly not. And Valley Landers are going to waste a few more precious seconds. James Kirby is coming into the game again, an experienced player. And it looks to me that it, it is Owen Walsh is coming. Indeed, it is Owen Walsh. A superb performance. Started a full forward, but funneled back into the midfield area for most of the second half. More of a link man than a scoring player t this evening, but hugely invaluable to Valley Landers. And as Matt said, the vastly experienced James Kirby is on. But it's Drum Broadford with Shawnee Buckley on the ball. Buckley into L Lynch. Lynch could dart, but it's Garrett Noonan who's been at the centre of the majority of the Drum Broadford attacks in the last five minutes. Wins it free. It's a foul by Lee. Went to take it free, and Mike Sexton will bring this in closer and closer to the goal on the 21 metre line. Yellow card shown to one of the Valley Landers. I think it's Stephen Walsh. This stage, it shouldn't be too much of an issue anyway. No, it, it, it's quite simple for Drum at this stage. I, I, I think they have to engineer a goal. A, anything less is of no use. And, uh, and it was Drum Bradford went for the goal, but again, as, as it's been most of the game, it's Brian O'Connell that came out with it. Inside his brother Mark and Rip Brian, the tireless Brian O'Connell, down the right hand side. No doubt looking for a free, and it's one he wins. A poor challenge from Joro Garman. Maybe looking for some retribution from a, a clash earlier in this half. Won't matter much to Brian O'Connell as Belly Landers look to finish this game out by holding on to possessions. Jimmy Barry Murphy on the ball. Across his own 45, Kieran O'Callaghan has now moved back inside his own half. It's Stevie Fox being repositioned in the full forward. And again, Barry Murphy with a low ball. Looking for Fox. Fox. Can't taste it, but he wins a sideline ball off Jack Ryan. And again, it's only a, a, a case now of wasting more and more precious seconds for Belly Landers. A bit of experience there again, I think, uh, uh, of Steve Fox, like in, 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 in forcing the defender to put the ball out over the line and uh, getting the kick, the, the, the line ball for Belly Landers. And of course, wasting absolutely priceless time when we're two minutes into injury time at this stage. I, I, I think there can be only a minute or two left at this point, and it's 19, 19 points to 110. Belly Landers will be very pleased with their total of 19 points. Absolutely, and they've, they've dominated the second half. We were discussing during the first half and that half time how important this breeze has been, but Bellylanders have completely thrown that one out the window anyway. 
Yeah, we did say at the start that the breeze, the breeze doesn't doesn't win games, and I suppose this this is a concrete uh, example of it. And uh, Ballylanders will be extremely extremely pleased with that with their second half because it has been a most most encouraging performance. Because you would have to say to a certain degree that the that the odds were against them at at, at half time, and it's all it's all over now. Indeed, and it is a wonderful performance from Ballylanders here to beat Drum Broadford. 19 points to 110 this Irish Wire product sponsored Limerick Senior Football Championship. They move on to three points now from three games while Drum Broadford stay on two. Matt, final thoughts on the game? Yeah, I suppose in the context of the group, uh, it, it's a hugely important win. And we did say at the outset, John, that it, it was far more important. Um, for the, the two points were far more crucial for, for Belly Landers than, than they were for. Um, uh, Drum Broadford, not that they weren't important for Drum Broadford. Um, it, it certainly gives Drum Broadford some work to do now to 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 qualify for, for, for the concluding stages. Um, Ballylanders are, are not out of the woods by any manner or means yet. They have two more games, two more games to go, and. Um, Certainly, they will take huge encouragement fr from this performance, and and they 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 will they will go into their next game next weekend when they're due to play um, Mona Lee in here in Kilmarnock on next Saturday evening, I think it is. They w w with a certain element of not only confidence but a certain swagger, based on on on, on the on the second half. Um, Yes, they had their failings. They, they, they had failings certainly in the first half in, in that their conversion rate wasn't what it should have been. Um, they were slow and ponderous in their build-up at, 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 um, in the first half and certainly they, they corrected that after half-time in, in that they moved the ball forward faster. They pressed Drum, Drum, Drum Broadford back and, and, and it paid dividends and, and they had the forwards that got the crucial scores. On a man, he was pivotal in that, picking up three points from play. Um, Jimmy Barry Murphy, he, he was excellent to, throughout both from freeze and, and in his contribution to play and he picked off a, a point or two also from play. Um, but the engine of Brian O'Connell was, was something else and, and the, um, the amount of ground that, that, um, that, that, he, that, he, that he covered. For Drum Bradford, he, he they, 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 they too have two games left. They, they have two points. They, 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 they certainly have a, have a bit of work, a bit of work to do. But whenever Drum Broadford back have been to the wall in, in the last two decades, it's then we see, we see them at their, at, at their best. But you, you would have to say that the level of experience that they had with the experienced players in the past may not be there at, at, at present that they are a team that certainly are very 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 much in 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 transition transition and certainly they they need they need they, they, they need to turn it around pretty quickly now because um um you run out of games very very quick in this uh, and we did say at the start in our intro that when, when we were talking about the importance of the third round and what can happen in the third round and the movement in, in the third round, we've seen it there this evening, and um, it couldn't be better from a Belly Landers point of view. It heightens the challenge for Drum in the remaining two rounds. Um, it's still a very, very interesting group. N nothing has been decided. All we know is that Adair are definitely through to the knockout stages in Group 1. Other than that, it's all to play for still. Indeed it is. They're the thoughts of the Vale Star Weekly Observer's Matt O'Callaghan, who's been on co-commentary today with me for Sporting Limerick. Join us again soon for more action.